Now, I'd like to go back to the footer at the moment. So we have a list of different categories or basically muscle groups over here being displayed in the footer itself. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to add a handler for those categories. So when I click on something and I select it, I'd like to have a callback function. So if you, in fact, let's go back to the documentation just so that I can show you what's going on here. And the element that we're using is called tabs. So if you go back in there, I think we used this specific example. And as you can see here, there's actually an on change event listener. So that's exactly what we're gonna use. Back in here, I'm gonna add it to the list. And let's perhaps pass it from the app.js component. Let's call it on select. So when a new category is being selected, I'd like to call that property that we're gonna pass on the footer. On select, now we're gonna create a new handler here. I'm gonna call it handle let's call it category selected. We're gonna to need to create a method for that. It's gonna accept the new category, okay? It's gonna be an arrow function. And what we're gonna do inside of that method, we're actually gonna set the category on the state. So you can think of this category that's being passed as the current selected category. So for instance, for now, all are selected, but I also wanna be able to select, let's say chest, or let's say select legs, okay? So we need to store that current or selected category on the state as well. We could actually add it in the state if we wanted to, for instance, category. By default, we can have an empty string, but if we don't do that, if we basically just extract it from the state, or if we try to do that, right? So we can use destructuring again from the state, okay? This uh, state, this thing would be undefined because there's no such property on the state at the moment, and that's perfectly fine. We're still gonna need to pass it down to the footer though. So let's pass down that category as a prop to the footer. Okay, let's save that. And like I said, here we're actually gonna get the category string and we're gonna set it on the state. Now back in the footer, we are going to accept the category as well. It's gonna come from the props. So this will be the current selected category as, as it's being defined on the state. Now, the problem here though is that we're using indexes, right? So the tabs component is expecting an index rather than the string. So the category would be something like, if we go back to the store, it would be something like shoulders or it might be something like arms, but the actual tabs component needs to have an index. So we need a way to transform that string, or that category into an actual index. So what I'm gonna do is let's return all the markup for the time being, okay? Okay, all the extra spacing there. And what we're actually gonna do is, I'm gonna have a new constant, I'm gonna call it index. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say, all right, if we have a category, right, we are actually going to find that category in the list of muscles. Now you can think of that category as basically a body part, right? We're gonna find the index on the muscles and we're gonna look through them, we're gonna get another muscles object, or you could call it a category, or you could call it a group, okay? And if that group equals the category that's being passed from above, then we know that we get the index. So for instance, if the category is being set to something like, in fact, let's actually set it on the state, let's set it to legs, okay? I'm gonna save that. When the category equals legs, we're gonna be able to find legs inside of the array that's coming from the store. So it's gonna be the very last element over here. And its index is actually going to be six because we have seven different exercises. So it's gonna be the very last element. And if we don't have category for any reason, then we're basically going to default to index zero. Now the thing here is when we have the zero index, that index is going to correspond to the very first tab, okay? So for instance, if I get legs, my index is going to be six. However, it needs to be seven for the tabs because I already have another tab on top of the other ones. So I actually need to increment the index over here. Well, let's actually remove the on change for the time being. Let's actually pass the index here. Let's save it. And as you can see here, the legs are already being selected. But if I, let's say type arms, of course, that's gonna select the arms. Same thing, chest, for instance, right? And if I remove the category, so right now we're passing undefined down to the footer component. And because we have the check in place, we're checking, do we have the category? If yes, then find the index in the muscles. 
and then increment it by one because like I said we already have another tab over here on the top otherwise default to zero and that's going to give us the element of all okay and finally let's back the on change handler the one thing though the on select method that we do pass from the container component over here well it's actually backed up by a method that expect a category so it does expect an actual string so be it arms or be it legs but what we do get in the on change method once we do provide a callback is we actually get an event itself but we also get an index instead of the actual value because in the tab we're actually operating with the indices now we can actually provide a callback so this could be a function for example and what we might do is we might just simply call on select and when we do actually call it, we might have a check that says, well, do we have an actual index here? And if it does equal to the value of zero, well, then I just want to pass an empty string because the category that corresponds to all is not something that we have defined in the store. So I'm just going to pass an empty string. Otherwise, I'm actually going to pass a category that comes from the muscles. And because I have the index, I just need to decrement it by one. So we need to reverse the action that we did before over there. And we will find the element in the muscles array and we're just basically going to pass it up to the app.js component. The app component is going to receive the category and the category is going to be set on the state. Now you could do this in line, but I do prefer to actually extract it to a separate constant function. And we're going to do perhaps on index select or something like that. Let's get rid of those curly braces. Okay narrow function and we're gonna pass it down to on change okay let's save that and let's see if it actually works so now we should be able to select a different category okay so I click on shoulders that's gonna select the shoulders chest same thing and once we get hold of that category in app.js I'd like to also pass it down to the exercises component as well so we're gonna pass that property to exercises back in index.js for the exercises here we're gonna accept the category prop and what we're actually gonna do inside of the map function over here, well, we're gonna actually display the list if the category is set to something that's falsy. All right, so this could be undefined, which is the case in the very beginning when we create the app, or it could also be an empty string when you actually select all from the list of tabs, okay? Or we want to display it if the category actually equals the group that we're looping through at the moment. I'm gonna also have a ternary expression and we're gonna pass null if that condition yields false. Otherwise, we're actually gonna have a fragment element. And let me bring it up here and I'm gonna paste it over there, okay? I indent it just a little bit, let's save the file. So now if I actually select shoulders, that's gonna show me the exercises only for the shoulders body part. And the same thing for everything else, chest, arms, legs, back, whatever the case might be. But if it's all, that's gonna show me all of the different exercises. The other thing I'd like to do is when we actually click on the list item in the list, I want to be able to display the contents of that exercise on the right tab over there. So how do we approach that? Well, let's actually indent the uh, list item text elements over there with the props. And I'll also pass another property, I'm gonna call it on click. And the onClick property is going to have a function which is going to call an onSelect method. It's going to come from the properties. And it's going to pass the ID of the exercise. Of course, we don't have the ID, so we need to destructure it from the exercise object when we are looping through them. So we're going to call that property and we're going to pass the ID of that exercise, which is going to be selected. And back in here, we of course need to provide that on select handler. We're gonna have a handler as well. So let's call it handle exercise selected. We're gonna need to create a method that's going to accept an ID. And once we actually get the ID, we can call set state on it. Now, what I'm gonna set in the state is gonna be an exercise. And this exercise is going to refer to the currently selected or chosen exercise that we clicked on from the list on the left. And what we need to do is we actually need to get that exercise from the state. And if you're familiar with the set state function, there's actually a small caveat about it. So if you go to the React 
documentation. Let's go to state and life cycle. If you search for set state, you're actually going to find a bit of an information about it, but specifically, we're interested in the alternative form of set state, where instead of passing an object that contains the new property for that state that's going to be merged with the existing state, we can actually pass a callback that's going to receive the previous state as well as the props, and it's going to return a new state object that's again going to be merged. So the reason for doing that is because I don't want to do, I don't want to actually reference the state inside of set state because the set state function is asynchronous and something else in the app might already change the state while I'm calling it. So I, in order to avoid that situation, I actually want to get the previous state. So the state that we do have at the moment, so previous state, and I'm gonna pass a callback. Now the callback is going to return an object and inside of that object, I'm gonna create an exercise property and I'm actually going to get a list of exercises from the previous state. So previous state exercises, okay? Now of course, in this case, we just need the exercises themselves. So we can just simply destructure them from the previous state object like so. Let's call the exercises and I'm actually gonna just do find we're gonna loop through them, we're gonna get an exercise object, and if the ID on that exercise object matches the ID that's been given to the method, well then that's the exact exercise that's being selected, and we're gonna set it on the state. Finally, we're also gonna to need to extract the exercise object itself. So this would be the currently selected exercise that's being set on the state. And we're gonna grab that exercise, and we're also going to pass it down to exercises itself. Okay, so the exercises component. In index.js, we need to accept that exercise as well. So let's include it also. And in fact, in app.js, we actually need to set the exercise to an empty object by default. And once we get that object, we can actually destructure all the different props that we're interested in. So let's get the ID, let's get the title, let's get the description as well, okay? And for now, we can actually indent this a little bit. So let me indent the categories over there. Let me get rid of those spacings. And the exercise is going to be an object like that. So we're gonna get the ID, we're gonna get the title, description, and this would go on a separate line as well. Same thing here. So these are the different props that we're gonna get. Now we can have a ternary expression here. So we might say, do we have an ID? If so, I want to display the contents of that exercise object. So we're basically gonna display the title over here inside of the first element. Otherwise, we'll just display the description. But instead of a ternary, what I'm actually gonna do is I'm going to grab the welcome message and I'm gonna set it as the default value of the title. And I'm also gonna grab the description. So this thing over here at the bottom and I'm gonna actually use it as the default value for the description so that we don't have to duplicate the two typography elements and have a ternary because it's gonna just look ugly. So I'm gonna have the title in there and I'm also gonna have the description over here. So let's save the file and let's actually see what that gives us. So by default, we get these two messages. One is welcome, one is the description. So those default values that we set on the props, okay? But if I do select an exercise, I'm gonna see the details for that exercise being displayed on the right. So now you're actually able to select the exercise and see all of the details for it. The only thing we'll do though is instead of having the on click on the actual text itself, I'm gonna have the on click on the list item, okay? And I'm gonna adjust the spacing here. Let's bring the primary back in there on the top. Let's get rid of the extra spacing here. And let's save that. So now the functionality is basically the same. You click on the list item, but for the time being, you don't actually have to click on the text, specifically the text uh, that's being displayed inside of the list item text component. You can actually click on the list item itself like that. And that's also going to select the exercise from the list. And if you narrow it down to, let's say, chest exercises, you click on it, you're still able to select it. Same for arms. Now, the one thing though, is we forgot to have a key property here and the key could basically be the ID of the exercise for the time being. And I think we also forgot the key on the fragment element, so I'm just gonna pass the group as the key for that fragment object. 
and that should be fine because the group is basically unique within the list of muscle groups or body parts that we define in the store. And lastly, if you go to the footer, I think we forgot the key property. Let's not forget that. And we can also assign it to the group because like I said, the group is always unique. So this is basically it for the time being. In the next video, we're gonna create a button that's gonna allow us to add exercises. We're also gonna be able to add a few other buttons. For example, to add it, the existing exercise, once it's being selected from the list. And we'll add a delete button that's gonna allow us to delete the exercise from the state on the app component. So lots of work to do. I'll see you next time.